partners in, in the good future. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, Coach, you start us off. Yeah, that was just um, a fantastic win. You know, the second time in as many games, you know, we get down double digits in the second half. So proud of our players. They hung tough. You know, we talked about it the other night, you know, just down 11. And we talked about guys, we're down 11, we're down 14. Plenty of time, plenty of possessions when you play Auburn. Thought we got great uh, play off the bench. Obviously, Romello and Devontae was just fantastic. You know, Devontae had a great clean look and in, in regulation, he, he was upset. We said, Devontae, you're going to get the last one. You're going to get another one, I promise you. And, and it was just fitting that it went in. And uh, so good job by the staff and uh, really good week for the Rebels. Ben, go ahead. Yeah, Kermit, um, you mentioned that y'all fell behind by 14 points. I think Auburn made eight of their first 14 shots in the second half. What changed defensively? You know, Ben, we, we weren't very successful in our zone tonight. I mean, Cooper's as good as advertised with the ball. You don't really realize it. You watch it on tape until you see it. And he, he just, God, he just sees everything. And so he kind of picked us apart really in the zone. So we had to go back to man. And, you know, maybe a couple of timely switches. I just thought it was a great effort. Thought it was a great effort. Offense didn't affect defense. Uh, you know, we, we just kept getting that ball inside of Romello. He made some great plays. Avante was spectacular. Uh, you know, and uh, I mean, we gave up 84, so we gave up more points. It was just good to see our team be able to win a game in the 80s. Tyler, go ahead. Kermit, obviously Sharif Cooper didn't play in that first matchup, but what were the biggest differences that you noticed between your team in, in these two games that you've matched up against Auburn? Well, I mean, there, there's nobody better in college basketball with the ball in his hands than pick and roll. Nobody. He had 14 assists. I mean, he just makes everybody better. And I mean, he just, whether he Euro throws, sees a long roll. I mean, he struggled a little bit. He made a couple. And then when he makes a couple shots like he did early, it's just, he's almost unguardable. Second half, he got to where he didn't make as many and you can kind of play position defense. But that was really the difference. It's just him. Auburn's got a really good team. Uh, I thought they came out really, really tough and hard tonight. I knew that's what would happen uh, after the Georgia game. And uh, our guys just played now. now. That was a really good team we beat tonight on their home floor. Parrish, go ahead. Kermit, did you think uh, uh, Cooper's second half was really about him just missing shots, or, or did you really like the defense you guys played against him? What did you guys do to kind of facilitate that? Yeah, you know, Parrish, I thought we turned him over a little bit and, uh, you know, off some steals and got some baskets, and that was good. And, you know, you just, you just got to gap him. You got to gap him. He's got to shoot all of you. And, and, and you know, Parrish, if he, if he makes kind of those threes from 22 feet, I think you got to live with it. That's just kind of what you have to do. And I think the first half he made one or two. Second half didn't have as much success. We kept him out of the paint. I thought Romello White was unbelievable in rim protection for about a five-minute period. I mean, he blocked shots. He challenged everything at the rim. And so when you get a guy like that, he really covered up a lot of our defensive mistakes in the perimeter. Did you tell your guys to expect a game in the 80s? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't, Bears. You know, I, I wasn't looking forward to the games in the 80, but it sure is nice to, to win one like that. And uh, But we knew against teams like Auburn, you're going to have to score. I mean, you just you, you can't shut those guys out, especially with Cooper in there. And uh, that's what those guys played downhill. And when you have one guy get 30, another guy get 26, you know, then, then you can play in the 80s. Adam, go ahead. Coach, you kind of mentioned this with Romello, but just Romello's uh, production to, tonight in the game. Yeah, I mean, you talk about Adam, he has 30 and 10 and four blocks. I mean, that's that that's about as good of numbers as, as any guy's had in our league as a big. Uh, and then he willed his team to win. And so that, that was just terrific. I mean, that was – that's the best he's played, but he's been coming on. We've been doing a better job getting it to him. He's been having better practices, figure out more ways to score in our offense. So, so give him credit and our, and our players uh, credit for, for finding him in opportune times. Neil, go ahead. Hey, Kermit, I was kind of following up on that with Romello. Was the plan tonight to offense through him throughout the game, or did it, did it sort of develop when you saw how dominant he was in the post? 
Yeah, we, we, we've talked a lot about to our team, you know, after the Georgia game, just that our, our inside guys weren't getting enough touches. We have to play through them. And, you know, we talked about Romello has to do a good job of executing, and we have to find him. And, and I just thought the last couple of games, especially this week, he, he did a great job of finding spots in the offense. I even thought the shots that he missed were great shots, pick and pop shots. And we, we put in two or three other new things to try to, to isolate him in the post. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, we, we really do. We need to play through him. And he's a good passer, you know, so he can pass it out, out of the double teams if they, if they choose to do it. They chose not to do that tonight. I remember him talking in the preseason about his face-up game and that being something he really wanted to start to show and, and that kind of thing. He hasn't done that consistently this season. Was tonight a little bit of a what you've seen from him and maybe a confidence kind of a thing? Yeah, it was. And we, we just tell him to shoot it every time. I mean, just, you know, his, his screening angles weren't great early. And, then, you know, you get pick and pop shots by screening angles. And, he, and now his angles are a lot better. Uh, I mean, the, the wide open three, he shots fine. Uh, he made some great ones right around 15 feet at the high post, which I thought was good. Uh, some against zone, some against man. So, yeah, cause, because the lane's just going to shrink with double teams. He's got to stay physical. Uh, but, yeah, he's got to become just an elite screener. And if he does that, then he's going to get some of those pick and pop opportunities. Chris, go ahead. Kermit, do you feel like your team's, you know, experience kind of showed, um, you know, throughout that second half and even that OT period, you know, with Auburn making that shot, but y'all still having the, the composure, you know, come down and, and hit the game winner? Yeah, well, you know, I just I, – Devontae and I talked about it a bunch, and I kind of got into Devontae coaching pretty hard at halftime. And that's just what senior elite guards do. They find ways to close these kind of games out. That's all I've talked to Devontae about you know, for the last month, and, and he did it. He closed it out. Not, I mean, obviously he closed it out by making the game winner, but other tough plays. You got Romello White. I mean, he's a fifth-year senior, been in big games, you know, so you got two veteran guys that, that really just made some terrific physical plays down the stretch. Ben, go ahead. Kermit, you've touched on this already, but, I mean, your team had been 1-9 in nine when allowing opponents to score 60 points, 0 for 7 when giving up 70 or more to win a game like this. What can it mean moving forward? Yeah, it just does. I mean, it's just college basketball. And, and good teams win in all different areas. You know that, Ben. And whether you can beat a number 10 ranked team 52 to 50 or score in the 80s in an overtime game, that's when your team starts maturing. And you do. You have, you'd like to play the same way every time, but you play different styles. Auburn is an up and down uh, team. Did we guard at times like we should have? We didn't. Uh, but we found other ways to win, which was, which was great, great to see. Any other questions for Coach? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Ramella White and Devontae Shield.